lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm doing the Veggie Tales book tag, which was created by Kate over at Chapter Kate, and I will post the link to her original video down in the description below if you want to check that out. Today I had to pick a new location to film because they're doing road work on my street, so sorry if there are any random scraping, banging, clanking noises or any ambient noises that I'm not used to being in a different room. Also, the cat is upset because we've completely ruined his routine with the uh, road work. So he's trying to take a nap, but in the room that I'm filming it, obviously. But he's adorable, so he gets to be on camera. I love you, babes. Okay. <laughs> so, Veggie Tales is a Christian cartoon that was created in the 90s. It is computer animated, and vegetables tell Bible stories. Um... They're ridiculous and funny and cute and silly, and I love them. And a huge part of that show is songs. So there is a segment in the middle of the episode where it's called The Silly Songs with Larry, where Larry the Cucumber comes out and sings silly songs that are just completely random and just ridiculous, and they are so much fun. And there is also songs throughout the episodes in which they relate to the Bible story and, like, you know, Disney songs where they're, like, telling the story, but also, like, they're ridiculous and fun and cute. So... There are nine questions, each of them inspired by one of those songs from VeggieTales. All right, the first one is the Water Buffalo song, which is wonderful because it is the very first silly song. So this one is a book that everyone loves but you haven't read. So I picked The Fall in Our Stars by John Green. I even own it. I just I haven't read it yet. I love John Green's books. I have read a bunch of them already, even reviewed them, but I can't bring myself to read The Fault in Our Stars because it's about two teenagers dying of cancer. I know it's a romance. I've seen the movie. It just made me cry so much that I am just never up for that kind of emotional commitment in a book. So I've been putting it off and have not gotten to The Fault in Our Stars. Question two, the hairbrush song. Um, This one... <laughs> So this song is about Larry running around his house looking for his hairbrush, even though he's a cucumber and doesn't have hair. Um, but this is a book that you love and you can't find anyone else talking about. And I picked Enchanted Ink by Shanna Swenson. Book one actually has a few book reviews um, on BookTube and a few reviews on Goodreads. But I'm currently rereading the entire series because the ninth book just came out. And basically nobody has done book reviews past book one. So I'm going to count that as literally nobody is talking about this on book two. And that is a shame. Um, the Enchanted Ink series is about Katie Chandler, who is a magical immune. So she lives in a world in which there are wizards and magical creatures. Um, and most of the time those wizards fail their spells and pixies hide themselves. They look like normal humans. Um, so that the general population doesn't know that magic exists. However, Katie is completely immune to magic, so she can see the spell. At the same time, there's sort of this magical business war happening with a former member of their company starting his own business and selling spells that can do harm, which is generally against their code of conduct. So they're trying to shut down this business before mundane people, people who don't do magic and don't know that magic exists, get taken advantage of. So... It's really cute. It's like fantasy meets chiclet. It's adorable. It's romantic. And I just, I love the way magic works in this company and this entire world. I love the fact that Katie can't do magic and that makes her way more important than even some of these really powerful wizards. Question three is his cheeseburger. So this is an entire love song sung by a squash as an ode to his favorite fast food cheeseburger that he tries to go get late at night. But he shows up after the drive through has closed and he can't get his cheeseburger. So he is left without his great love. So the corresponding book question is, a book you were excited for but still haven't read. So I picked City of Heavenly Fire. It's the sixth and final book in the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. I have read the first five and I just, I got burned out on the series. So within this world, we have shadow hunters. These are people who basically hunt down demons um, and defend the general populace without them even knowing it. Um, it's a fun, imaginative world. I love the characters, but reading the, 
of three prequels, which were amazing inside the Victorian era, and some of my favorites, combined with reading the five books in this series that lead up to this one, and I just got burned out, and I just haven't gotten back. Plus, book six is huge. Um, so it's going to be a massive time commitment, too. So I just... And now I'm at a point where it's been so long that I feel like I need to go back and reread them, and that I don't feel like is going to happen either. So I just... I love the series, but I just can't bring myself to read the last one. Number four is Dance of the Cucumber. So this is one in which Larry the Cucumber comes out and sings uh, this entire song in Spanish, while Bob the Tomato translates it into English, and the song is ridiculous, the translations are ridiculous, Larry stops getting, starts getting more and more ridiculous as the song goes on. It's absolutely hilarious. Anyway, the corresponding question is a translated book you enjoyed, or would like to read. So for me, that pick is the manga Library War, Love and War by Kira Yumi. It's on the books by Hiro Arakari, and it has art by Kinami Watabe. I just slaughtered all those names, guys. I'm sorry. Um, this is a Japanese manga series. It is based off a novel that was also originally written in Japanese, and there's also an anime based off of it. So all the original work is in Japanese, and then they're translated into English. So this series uh, centers around a military library, basically, where in this dystopian future in which the government has outlawed a lot of books, there's massive censorship going on, there are major restrictions on what libraries can and can't do, and the libraries take a stand and they form a military organization, and so you've got these two parts of the library. There is, like, the military part that, like, literally goes out and defends censorship with, like, guns and everything, and then the actual, like, library staff of what we would normally think of, like, the librarians who go and find the books and, like, curate the collection. It kind of takes a little bit where you have to, like, suspend your disbelief that, like, the government would even allow the libraries to take up arms against them, but somehow in this world it works, and I love the characters in it, I love the concept of, like, defending censorship, I also work in a library, so even, like, the bits where one of the side characters is just doing normal reference stuff, like, I even love those scenes. It is so much fun, and I adore that series. Question five, I love my lips. So this is one of the best Slay songs, in which Larry gets injured, uh, he gets stung by a bee on the lip, and he has to sing about it, um, about his bee injury and everything that happened while he was in the hospital. And it's absolutely ridiculous. He starts singing about how he loves his lips. This one is a book you've mentioned in at least five videos. So <laughs> for me, that is Cinder by Marissa Meyer and the entire Lunar Chronicles. I really love this series. So this is a uh, science fiction slash fantasy slash uh, fairy tale retellings set in this dystopian future. So our main character in the series is Cinder, who is a cyborg. She was in a fire when she was a kid, and so parts of her body have been replaced with mechanical parts. She's got, like, an eye that has, like, a computer in it. It's really cool. But they're all fairy tale retellings. So book one focuses on Cinderella, as Cinder goes and meets the prince of the whole Asian empire. Um, and the two of them have this romance, but it's not like... It is kind of an immediately fall in love kind of scenario, but, like... He's supposed to marry somebody else. She's uh, not, a, she's like a commoner, but like even cyborgs don't have full rights, so she doesn't even have, um, she's not even treated like a full human. There's also this plague going around. There's an evil queen from the moon involved in this. Um, the rest of the series starts introducing more fairy tale characters, so we eventually get to eat, meet Snow White and Rapunzel and uh, Little Red Riding Hood, and it's just, it's, it's so amazing. It is fantastic. I'm probably not describing this well enough. That may be one of the reasons why I talk about it constantly is because I can't quite describe it. But I, I love this series so much. The Pirates Who Don't Do Anything. So this is a silly song in which we have vegetables dressed up as pirates, but they're actually not very good pirates. They just like to lay around in pirate costumes and watch television and eat cereal. And it's ridiculous. So they don't actually go out marauding. So this is a book that went differently than expected. And for me, that is The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. This is such a huge book. It's such a classic. It's about a guy whose life gets ruined. He's thrown in prison. 
and these people conspire against him, and he ends up losing everything. And then he goes out and seeks revenge. And it's massive. It's like a thousand pages long. And I thought it was going to be, like, really boring. Um, there are some really, really intricate plots involved. There's a ton of backstory. We get to know these characters very well. But it was also highly entertaining and amusing and way better than I thought it could possibly be. Um, there are a few moments where it dragged a little, but on the whole, there's tons of excitement and tons of really fascinating characters. There are things that I didn't even think were going to be showing up in there. Like, there's this one character, Eugenie. Like, she's an aristocrat who's supposed to get married, um, inherit the family fortune, and it passes on to her husband, and she's not having it. She wants to be an artist, and she runs away with her maid, and there's a scene where they're caught in bed together, and I'm like, you know what, maybe, maybe they're not straight. Even though it's not, it's not specifically, like, mentioned, there's kind of some queer undertones in that, and I was not expecting any of Eugenie's character to be showing up in the kind of Monte Cristo, so. I definitely... Uh, was not the way I expected. There's also a bit with the main character um, at the end of the book, Dante, where his storyline didn't even end where I thought it was going to either. So, tons and tons of surprises in that book. And it was fun. It was, yeah, it was just so much more exciting than I thought it was going to be. Seven, Barbara Manatee. So this is a song in which Larry the Cucumber comes out and sings about his love of this soap opera character, Barbara Manatee, and he does it while dancing around with his stuffed animal of the said soap opera character. And it's so weird and fun also. Um, so this is a weird book that you adored. I love absurd humorous stuff, so I love a lot of weird books. Um, but something that even I found weird was The Strange Library by Haruki Murakami. I also had it fresh in my mind because it's one of the books that I considered for a translated work. Um, but this is a novella, and it's also got this weird art style where it's like the printed text, but then it's also combined with art, and like the way the text appears on the page is also part of the storytelling technique. So like the way the book is formatted is strange to begin with, but then it's a story about a kid who goes to return, or it's a kid who goes to the library, and he is looking for some like tax code book or something. It's even a weird book for like a kid to be asking for, but like he was told that whenever you have a question you go to the library. So he goes to look up this obscure fact that's in the basement archives and he ends up getting stuck there and there are like monsters in the library basement that he needs to escape from. It was such a, such, such a weird book. I mean, stranger than the title of this book and it definitely lived up to that. So yeah. But also, it was kind of fun. Um, and while it's creepy, it also went quickly, and it was also kind of just interesting to be in a world that I was not expecting at all. Like, anything that happened in that book, I was not expecting it to uh, play out. I'm so blue. So this is a song that a blueberry sings about how miserable she is with her life because she has all this um, stuff, but none of it is making her happy. The question that relates to this is a book that made you emotional. So I have recently read The Beauty That Remains by Ashley Woodfolk. It is about three teenagers who are all dealing with the death of another teenager that was really close to them. In one case it's the girl's twin sister, it's another one's best friend, it's somebody else's ex-boyfriend that they haven't even been talking to, and then we start dealing with other characters that they know and they're also dealing with the same loss. There is so much depth, so much grief, um, but it's done beautifully, and we get to see these characters progress, um, how they process their grief. They also all have a connection to music in this one specific band called Unraveling Lovelies, and so music plays a huge part of this, and overall it just left me crying like crazy. Like, it, it really is a gorgeous story, but also it left me an emotional wreck, so... Good bit sad. And then the last question is the Stuff Mart wrap. So this happens in one of the stories in which a new superstore, like Walmart or Target, opens in this town. It replaces part of an ecosystem. This community is not used to having one of those stores. There are aggressive salespeople going out and promoting this to like everybody nearby. 
and they sing this rap about everything that the store has. Like, it has everything you could possibly want and things you didn't even know you wanted. Um, so come stop by and buy everything. It's definitely a song about uh, consumerism and greed, and uh, so the question related to this is your book buying weakness. So for me, at the moment, it is anything that is Doctor Who or My Little Pony. Um, I have like three plus bookshelves worth of Doctor Who books right now. Um, a lot of them I haven't even read yet. So that is definitely one of my book buying weaknesses. And lately I've been buying all the My Little Pony comics. And also just buying toys that are related to these two franchises either because I just, I love them both. Um, so I've accumulated a lot of ponies and a lot of Doctor Who in several different formats. Whether it's the actual show or like related merchandise. I have a thing that makes me happy guys. That's what matters. Okay. Question 10 is just to tag people. So I tag anybody who wants to do this. Whether you've watched Veggie Tales or not. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. Uh, do you have any alternate answers to any of these questions? Peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.